In this problem, we're interested in finding the amount of electric field at point P. And in order to solve this problem, we're going to use a result that Griffiths derived earlier. So we're going to use the result of this example. So Griffiths showed us how to derive this result earlier in the book. So for the example that he showed us, there was this line charge over here with a charge density of lambda. It had a length of 2L. So at a distance of H away from the center of this line charge, the amount of electric field felt at this very point is equal to this expression. So this is going to be the magnitude, and this is going to be the direction. So at this very point, the amount of electric field that you feel will be equal to this much pointing in the z direction, so it's upwards. So this is going to be useful when we're trying to solve this problem, because if you draw the configuration over here, you'll see that it's actually just a combination of four of these cases combined together. So we're interested in the electric field at this very point. We're at a distance of z away from the center, and each side has a length of a. So you see that we actually just have four line charges placed together. So each of these line charges are going to contribute an amount of electric field. So the contribution from this side is going to point in this direction. The contribution from this side is going to be pretty similar. So it's going to go up and point in this direction. And the same for these two sides. So they're going to point in other directions. But essentially, each one of these arrows are going to be given that by this expression over here. So now in order to find the amount of electric field at this point, we just need to combine four arrows coming from these four line charges over here. So you see that this is just a combination of four cases of this example. So all we have to do is just to apply this formula and then multiply it by four. So now let's focus on the contribution from this side. So let's just take this side as an example. So you can see that uh, the parameters are kind of different. So for Griffith's uh, example, the length is 2L. In this case, the length is A. So we're going to, in order to use this result, we're going to have to do a substitution. So in this case, the 2L is going to be equal to A. And H, the distance uh, away from the center of the line, we see that in this case, so H will be the distance from here all the way to here. And you see that this distance can be given by the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that this part is a over 2. This height over here is z. So the distance from the center to the point where we're interested in is equal to the square root of a over 2 square plus z square. So it's just square root of z square plus a square over 4. So now we can substitute this directly inside this formula to find the amount of electric field coming from this line charge over here. So the electric field is equal to, so these constants just stay. So 2L, 2L just becomes A, so this becomes A lambda. So the H over here, we just use this expression, Z squared plus A squared over 4. And then over here we have H squared, so H squared is just Z squared plus A squared over 4, plus L squared, so L is equal to A over 2, so plus A over 2 squared. So you might be tempted to just take this expression here and then multiply it by 4 and then say we're done because we have one line charge so if we multiply it by 4 then it should be the total amount of contribution from these four lines, right? But the thing you should notice is that these all point into different directions. So some of the, some of these, so you, see, you can see the arrows point in the different directions. So some of these arrows, they would pile up and then contribute to a single direction but some of them will cancel each other out. So if you notice the contribution from this side to the contribution from this side, you see that if we break this up into a vertical component, to a horizontal component, and a vertical component, so this vector here I can break up into a horizontal and a vertical component, and I can do the same for this side. You see that the vertical component, they add up together, and for the horizontal component, they cancel each other out. So in the end, uh, we, we, sh we should multiply this by 4, and then we should also multiply this by, so if I say this angle here is, sin is theta, so I should actually enlarge this drawing to make it easier. So this is the uh, direction of the electric field. So I break this up into a horizontal and vertical component. So if I let this angle here be theta, so after multiplying this expression by 4, I also need to multiply this by sine theta to account for the horizontal components cancelling each other out. So only the vertical components survive, and they will just pile up the contributions from these four sides. 
So this essentially is the answer over here. So now all we need to do is find an expression for sine theta. So what is sine theta going to be equal to? We need to describe sine theta in terms of a and z, the, the constants that they've given us in this problem. So you can actually do a bit of geometry over here. So these lines are parallel, so you can, so you can tell that this angle here is also theta. So for this big triangle, if you take sine theta, that's just taking this line over here and then dividing it by the length of this line, the hypotenuse. So you just take z divided by this length over here, which is just z squared plus a squared over 4. So this is sine theta. So now we can just substitute this directly into this expression over here. So let's do just that. So get, getting this away. So sine theta is equal to z divided by the square root of z squared plus a squared over 4. So essentially we're done. So we now we need to, all we need to do is just to arrange things in a nicer way. So these constants, they pile up together. 4 lambda a z. And then uh, these two, they multiply together. They give you z squared plus a squared over 4. And then here, uh, this is actually just another a squared over 4. So you combine it with this over here, so you get a squared over 2. So this whole thing just becomes a squared over 2. So you have square root of z squared plus a squared over 2. And this is going to point in the outputs direction. So let me just call this direction the z direction. So for the electric field, you need to give it the direction. So the z direction, which is pointing upwards. So this is your answer. So this is going to be your answer.